God bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've been on here. Um, but I just really, really been allowing the Lord uh, to do his work in me. And as he has been doing his work in me, I have seen what has literally um, been unveiling in the earth. And I have been seeing uh, just how uh, prophecy has literally sped up on a whole different level. And I have seen how um, things are happening speedily. Things are happening very, very swiftly. And I've just been sitting back watching, watching and praying. The Bible says watch and pray. And I've just been watching and praying. And I just see the chaos. I see, you know, everything that's going on with the coronavirus and um, just all the different things that the Bible clearly uh, foretells in the book of Matthew chapter 24. And I want to just read that very quickly uh, is verse seven. And it says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So as, as we can see, Everything that's taking place right now is foretold. It is a foreshadow of things to come. You know, these are the beginning of sorrows. We should not be surprised. We should not be afraid. We should not be, um, you know, acting, you know, like the world. The world is scattering ab- abroad right now, you know, going to to stack, store up on foods and, and going to go get all of these things to try to protect them from this, this plague, this bubonic plague that has literally been infecting the whole entire earth, you know, and we should not fear. We should not fear because, you know, he said, pray that you be worthy to escape all of these things that are to come. You know, people look at the coronavirus and they're just so afraid of getting it. They're so afraid. But I believe what God is showing us that is that there is a bigger plague. There is a bigger pestilence that has literally been infecting and infiltrating the earth. There is a bigger plague that has literally been defiling us as humans and defiling the earth. And that plague is sin. And a lot of people don't want to talk about this. But this is the reason that these plagues and these pestilences and these sicknesses and infirmities and diseases and all of these different things that are taking place in this earth. Not only those things, but even the The famines, the earthquakes, all of these things are taking place because of sin. It is taking place because of sin. And the Lord was telling me that judgment is here. This is what the Lord was speaking to me today. He dropped this in my spirit. Judgment is here. It is literally here. You have heard from true prophets. You have heard from, um, you know, even through the word of God, that judgment was coming upon the earth. Judgment was coming. Judgment was coming. You heard that. I I heard that, you know, over the years that judgment is literally coming. But now as you can see, and it's undeniable, the world can see it. The world can feel it. Like this is the end. Like it's, we're, we're at that place right now where judgment is literally here. And God is not playing with the wicked anymore. He's not playing with the wicked. He's not playing with those who are in sin, those who are backslidden, those who are lukewarm, those who are compromising, those who are um, not truly walking in his ways, those who are faking it. Uh, He's not playing. He's not playing. The judgment of God is literally upon the head of the wicked. And as we can see, people are dropping dead left and right from this plague. And it's because of the sin.
And this is another scripture that the Lord led me to. And I really want to read this because I want us to get this. We have to wake up. You guys, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. God is trying to wake us up. He's trying to wake us up. He's trying to show us that I am coming. I am coming. You see all he said, when you see all of these things take place, he said, look up. He said, lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. So we see these things taking place. Yes, these are the beginning of sorrows, but the Lord is coming. And he said, no man knows the day nor the hour. He said, I come at a time you think not. Be ye ready. Lest that day come upon you unawares as a thief. He don't have to warn. He don't have to tell nobody when he coming. He can come now. He can wait years down the line. Jesus Christ can literally come back whenever the father tells him, my son is time. It's, it's time. He's going to come and nobody is going to be really expecting it. But only those who are looking for his coming, only those who are looking for that blessed hope. But I want to read this scripture to you guys. It's Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 22. And I'm going to just read. I'm just read down to like 27. So that, so that the generation to come, listen to this y'all. So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you. Remember he was talking to the children of Israel, right? But he's saying in this verse, the generation to, Come of your children that shall rise up after you, which I believe that that is the generation we are in right now. And he says, and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say when they shall see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses which the Lord hath laid upon it. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown nor beareth nor any grass groweth therein like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? So they're literally asking, why has the Lord done this to this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshiped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. So you guys, as we can see, these are the curses. This is a curse. There is a curse. There is judgment upon this land. There is judgment upon the earth. The whole earth is literally lying in wickedness. And God, he said that he would not always strive with men. He would not always strive with us. God has been holding back so much judgment, especially upon America. His grace and his mercy has been upon us for so long. And that's what that's because the prayers of the righteous people have been literally praying and weeping and crying in intercession on behalf of America. But now, as you can see, the plagues are coming upon America as well. America is not exempt any longer. America will share In her portion of the judgment of God that is being poured out on this earth. So as we can see, because of the sins of the children of Israel, there were curses that were put upon them, which came in the form of plagues. It came in the form of pestilences and sicknesses. You understand? So this is the reason why we see all of these things taking place. You guys, Jesus Christ is literally Warning us, he declares the end from the beginning. 
there was nothing new under the sun. Everything that happened in the in the days, uh, you know, with the children of Israel is exactly what's happening now. As it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the son of man. Just like it was then, it, it's, it's like that even now, but yet worse. The sin is far greater. The Bible says iniquity shall abound. It's abounding, you guys. Therefore, the judgment will abound. The same measure of the wickedness and the sin that is, is, is covering this earth, the darkness that's covering this earth will be the same measure that his judgment will be a poured out upon this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you guys are listening because this is not me speaking. This is the Lord speaking through me. I literally feel him speaking through me. Hallelujah. You guys, it's time to repent. It's time to repent. It's time to wake up out of your slumber. It's time to, to, to separate yourself from the things of this world, come out from among them, saith the Lord, and be ye separate. Then I will receive you to myself. Then I will be your God. Then I will do all of these things for you. I will be there for you. I will be with you. But many people are distracted. This world is this world is full of distractions. But it but there is a generation that God is raising up. There is a generation that God is raising up a people, a remnant. There is a people that is that are still crying out for God. There is a people that is still crying out for God. Like, Lord, I only want you. I only want you. I don't care about nothing this world has to offer me. I don't care about what Satan is presenting to me. I only want you. They are not. Looking to the winds and the waves, just like Peter did and began to sink. No, they're keeping their eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you guys. I want to exhort you guys. Wake up. Wake up. Put off the deeds of this flesh. Lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us. Turn away from your sin. Turn away from wickedness and disobedience. Turn away from it. This is for myself too, because I'm not perfect, y'all. God is still working in my heart. But I really feel led to, to speak this today for somebody because God, he said in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, all flesh. God is no respecter of persons. Whoever will make themselves a living sacrifice unto him. Holy and acceptable. This is our reasonable service. Whoever will make themselves willing to be used by God. God will use them as a voice. God will use them as a voice. So do not despise who God uses. Do not despise. He that hath an ear. Let them hear. Let them hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Jesus Christ is coming. Repent and get your household together. God is not playing. We are at the end and judgment is literally here. <sighs> 